Hey guys, how are you all doing? This is my recap for UFC Fight Night 34, Safadine vs. Lim. Um, my thoughts on the overall card. A little bit better than what I expected it to be. There are definitely some surprise performances there. Some fighters that looked promising. Um, and then also some fights that were just stinkers. And I don't know. Um, it was a bit of a mixed bag. The main event, though, was a great fight. And going forward, I mean, I don't want to say I'm, you know, I'm really eager to pay the ten bucks every month for Fight Pass, but you know, what can I say? I'm a diehard UFC fan, and I'm probably gonna end up paying it to see these cards. But, um, yeah, still the free trial right now. There's no fight next month, no card for Fight Pass, and the next one is going to be the Gustafson Manoa card. So, you know, there's going to be some better fighters on there, but I'm, just not, I'm not into all this regional talent. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, let's run through the card, and I'll give you my thoughts on all the fights. So, on the preliminary card, the first fight at Bantamweight, Russell Doan defeated Leandro Issa by technical submission in the second round, triangle choke. I didn't know anything about either of these fighters going into it, and, um, I wanted to pick Doan because Issa was a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy from what I could gather and most of the time uh, these these hyped up BJJ guys coming into the UFC uh, usually don't have much to offer and I was going to pick Doan but I picked Issa at the last minute but anyway um, the fight was pretty good Issa had his moments, got a few takedowns, got a triangle choke, I believe, at the end of the first round. But Doan was just better on the feet, and he was able to get the triangle choke in the second round and uh, choke Issa unconscious. Pretty impressive choking out uh, BJJ Black Belt. And Issa had his triangle choke locked up much longer than Doan did. So good stuff. And Doan, I think, looked pretty good, obviously can't really evaluate him too well fighting a, two newcomers fighting each other but I'm excited to see him again he put on a pretty exciting and pretty good performance I thought next up also at Bantamweight Dustin Kimura submitted John De Los Reyes in the first round by armbar uh, Kimura he got dropped early on and I thought Reyes was just looking great showed big power and was all over him with the ground and pound, but Kimura was able to to stay alive, and this guy is just slick off of his back. He must have gone for about five different submissions. He was rolling for knee bars, attacking the heel. He had a triangle lock, almost locked up at one point, but he was really attacking with all kinds of submissions. Um, it's very dynamic off of his back and eventually got the arm bar went belly down and finished John De Los Reyes. So a uh, strong strong performance for Kimura, even though he got cracked and dropped early on. Um, he's a guy obviously very good on the ground. I'm not quite uh, sold that you know he's gonna be able to be successful against higher tier opponents right now. I think it's pretty fair to say he's still a lower tier guy. Um, seems to not have very good striking defense. Has dropped in his last two fights. In this fight and his last fight. But a um, strong finish obviously and uh, he's a guy I'm really looking forward to seeing again. And John De Los Reyes also is a guy who I'm going to keep an eye on. I thought he looked pretty good 
in this fight, even though he got finished. Um, his power and his striking really impressed me. And I think he was one of the you know better unknown fighters on this card. Next up, a lightweight, Merbeck Tai Sumov defeated Tai Hyun Bang by unanimous decision. Yeah, um, they were saying this guy, someone from his camp, said he's the next GSP. Uh, definitely not. He just looked okay in this fight. Um, he w seemed kind of like a kickboxer. I'm having trouble remembering this fight, but um, yeah, I just remember Taisumov out striking, bang, uh, nothing too memorable. Yeah, um, and yeah, kind of a forgettable fight, at least for me, and I'm um, not too excited about seeing either one of these guys again. Next up, Abandonweight, Royston Wee defeated Dave Galera by unanimous decision. Uh, Royston Wee was a sm much smaller guy than Dave Galera, but he was just able to take him down repeatedly and didn't work too much ground and pound. Um, never really threatened with submissions. He was basically able to get the takedown at will, and Galera just had nothing off of his back. At one point, he threw a, a blatant illegal kick to the head from his back, um, knocked down Royston Weed. Um, it was just clearly illegal. Very kind of upsetting to see. But um, Royston Weed was able to just win the wrestling battle and controlled him on the ground. I don't think Galera has anything to offer at this level. And Royston Wee, you know, who knows? He seems to have a decent wrestling and grappling game. But, um, you know, again, tough to evaluate just two unknown guys. But Royston Wee was dominant in this fight, although he never really came close to a finish. Next up, a lightweight. Katsunori Kakuno defeated Quinn Mulhern by unanimous decision. Uh, Kakuno lit him up on the feet a bit and was able to hold him down on the ground, and that's pretty much the story of the fight. Quinn Mulhern, uh, he's announced his retirement, and Kakuno, I don't know, I guess it was a decent performance beating a, a strike force and UFC vet, but I didn't think he looked particularly impressive. Not really excited about seeing him again. And next up at Featherweight, Max blessed Holloway. TKO'd Will Chope in the second round. Um, Chope was hanging in there in the first round. Didn't really have much in the striking department for Holloway, but uh, you know, another, a good performance by Holloway. Just let Chope up on the feet. Uh, landed the spinning back kick a few times. He's throwing that a lot and finished him off in the second round. He was real aggressive in this fight. Impressive performance, but again, um, you know, who's Will Chope? But, um, yeah, you know, Holloway's a good fighter. He's a guy I've been high on for a while, and, you know, I'd, I'd rather see him fight better competition, obviously, but look good in this fight. Got the finish quick and easy like he was supposed to, and Will Chope, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing him back again against some lower-level competition to see what he's really capable of. And onto the main card at Bantamweight, Kyungho Kang submitted Shinuchi Shimizu in the third round um, by arm triangle choke. And Kyungho Kang was just putting a beating on this guy right from the beginning. Was able to get the takedown almost at will and was just pounding on Shimizu. He locked up a mounted triangle, I believe, in the first round and rolled over to his back. Wasn't able to get the finish, but took him down again for the rest of the fight and was just pounding on this guy. And Shimizu, he, um, I couldn't take this guy seriously. He was doing this thing where when he was on his back and just getting bludgeoned, he would like, it looked like he was knocking on the guy's face, <clears throat> not really hitting him, but doing something funny, and the crowd laughed. 
Um, I thought it was pretty embarrassing, but I don't know. He he had nothing for King and um, got beaten up pretty badly and finished in the third round. Good performance for King. You know, he's had some decent fights with Alex Caceres and Chico Camus. Draw both of those decisions and could say he won those fights. So I think he's doing okay, but again like to see him get back in there with some some better known competition and Ch Shimizu I think doesn't have anything the UFC level even at the bottom level next up at welterweight Kichi Kunamoto defeated Luis Dutra by disqualification um, Dutra is from Tough Brazil too and I was having trouble remembering who he was before this fight, but I realized um, that he was on Tough Brazil too, and I think I remember him getting a good submission win, and he had to leave the show because of an injury. And this guy just fucked up his opportunity here. Um, Kunimoto was going, he was in on a leg, had Dutra against the fence, going for a takedown, and Dutra ju just fired off three or four, maybe more. Um, clearly illegal elbows uh, right to the back of the head. They were also 10 to 6, kind of, but they were on the back of the head, clearly, and he was trying to argue um, after the ref stopped the fight that they were clean and it was just ridiculous. But, yeah, Kunimoto won by DQ, and I don't know, this fight was just a mess. Um, disappointing finish, but, you know... I have to blame Dutra, just, you know, he says he, he got carried away, but they were blatantly illegal and really messed up his opportunity here. Next up at Featherweight, Tatsuya Kawajira, Kawajiri defeated Sean Soriano by technical submission, rear naked choke in the second round. I didn't realize Sean Soriano was from the Black Zillions. When I heard that, I thought he was actually going to beat Kawajiri, Kawajiri, and he was a lot better on the feet in this fight. Um, was lighting up Kawajiri on the feet, but Kawajiri was stronger, able to get the takedown. And at the end of the first round, he actually took Soriano's back and was uh, really pounding away. It looked like he was close to getting a finish there, but. Uh, time ran out, and then the second round was able to get the takedown again and take the back, lock in that rear naked choke, and uh, put Soriano to sleep. So pretty strong performance for Kawajiri. I know a lot of fans have been anticipating his arrival into the UFC. I haven't followed his career, but um, looked good, although it was against a newcomer. He did give him some trouble, so... I don't really know quite what to make of him. I don't know if he can really do this against higher level competition. Um, he does have a win over Josh Thompson, but um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm quite sold on him going forward. Next up, the main event, um, a great fight, by far the best fight on the card and really exceeded my expectations for it. Tarek Safadine put in a great performance both guys did, but Safadine, I believe it, it was in the third round, um, knocked Hyun Gi Lim down with a leg kick, and it looked like Lim was just done. But Lim is able to survive, I think partly because Safadine um, got on top of him after he knocked him down that first time. I thought he showed a really um, big mental error on his part by going to the ground with Lim after he had knocked him down from a leg kick. I mean, why wouldn't you just let the guy stand back up? He probably, you know, wouldn't be able to stand back up. And if he did, you could just keep chopping away at that leg. But, you know, it gave Lim time to recover being on top. And then in the fourth round, Safadine even started to win. The striking battle looked like he wobbled Lim on the feet a bit. But Lim was just real tough in this fight. Especially in the fifth round, he was screaming at Safadine, and he was going for the finish. Um, and he had Safadine hurt 
uh, near the end of the fifth round. If he had more time, probably could have finished him. He had him dazed and uh, wobbly on his feet. But these guys went back and forth from the third to the fifth round there, and um, it was a great fight. Both guys showed great heart. But Safadine, uh, this guy's a technician. Those leg kicks, the same thing he did to Marquardt. Um, some of the best leg kicks in the business, I think. Knocking guys down with them, really tearing up their legs. And his striking looked pretty decent. Um, some people are knocking him for not getting the finish in this fight. I don't really blame him you know, for that. I think he was a bit exhausted, exhausted and fatigued. And Lim was so tough. But um, again, you know, I think when he knocked him down the first time with the leg kick, I think uh, Lim was done there. And if he had, had just forced Lim to stand up he could, and kept kicking him, kicking his leg, I think he could have easily won that fight. But both guys really elevated um, in my eyes, especially Lim. You know, I knew we knew Safadine was experienced. He'd been in big fights before, obviously, the last Strike Force champion beating Nate Marquardt and also fought Tyron Woodley before. Um, and Lim, you know, looked good in his last fights, but against really low level competition. And, you know, he had his moments in here. It was real tough, nearly got finished, hung in there, and you know, had Safadine in trouble late. So great performance by both guys. Um, excited to see both guys again. And, yeah, Safadine won, but I think Lim really elevated his stock as well. So that's my recap for UFC Fight Night 34, Safadine versus Lim. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Please like the video, comment with your thoughts, subscribe, and check out my predictions for UFC Fight Night 35, Rockhold versus Philippou. Take care, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.